Hello there. Uh, this is uh, Drew from Boot Snake Games, and uh, today we're going to spend some time playing and talking about containment a little bit, uh, just to give some backstory of what is the game, how you play it, and things like that. So, without further ado, I'll start up. I'm going to play through one of the campaign levels. Um, it's one that we like a lot to show off the game. It's the first map here. So, uh, Containment is a zombie puzzle game. It's a... It looks like Bejeweled, and it plays kind of like Go with zombies. So, the idea here is I need to surround this group of... Or I need to surround this zombie with a group of the same type of survivor. So we have three cops here. So if I take this soldier and swap it with this cop, I surround it and they attack and take out the zombie. And then after each uh, move, whenever there's a completed thing, new guys come in from the top. So now I can take this soldier, move him from over there, make the surround and finish him off. So that's the core mechanic of the game. There's a lot more to it, but uh, we'll just keep playing through this and show off some cool stuff. Uh, as you saw, uh, we have some in-world text that we use to tell the story as well as uh, give, uh, like talk about how to play the game in some ways. So here, we have a bigger group and you surround the whole group together and you don't have to worry about the corners. So we have this little thing showing you exactly which places to put your guys. So I'm going to finish the surround using soldiers so they, they get the surround off and kill them. And I need to get this other guy. So what you saw there is we have environment kills. It's something we're really, really happy with, and we use it at least every place in the game, at least every level in the game once. And you know, we'll have cop cars careen in, we'll have signs fall off of buildings and crush things, uh, propane tanks explode, all sorts of fun ways to, you know, take out zombies and sometimes take out civilians as well. So I'm just going to keep making these moves and I'll just kind of talk about like how or why we made the game. So when we were forming the, the company, we, we had an idea to make some small, fun, quick little games. Uh, that quickly got out of hand with this game. We, we prototyped this very quickly using uh, uh, XNA. We, we did it all in 2D originally with just circles surrounding other, other colored circles. And the game was fun. It was, really, it was something we really liked a lot. Like People really grabbed onto the concept whenever we showed it to anybody. And the whole scrolling through the city, the the way that we have, you know, the zombies actually will fight back. I'm going to go ahead and make some moves and show what I mean by that. But the, the concept of the game really came out of just a, a very simple thing, and then it just grew and grew and grew and became something that we really, really be happy with. We showed it to some people, and originally it was just going to be a, a small little game, um, and then it just kept being something we wanted to spend more time on and make something really special with. And so what we have is a really a, a much bigger game than we originally anticipated we have. So as you saw, some zombies are attacking out. They actually show which way they're moving. Uh, so I can actually set up traps based on how they're going to like attack out. So these three zombies are each going to take out these civilians. Like this one here, I'll take out one that takes out the scientist here. Then they'll all be trapped by that, and then we get to kill. So there's some fun mechanics like that that you can like, create with the game, just based on, on how the zombies interact with the world, as opposed to just, you know, like Normal Match 3, where it's just you versus the, you know, trying to get a high score on the board or something like that. So we have this war this story. We tell the story. It's a it's a story of the the town of Franklin just trying to survive the zombie apocalypse, and all the the story is told with in world text as we move from block to block, and we're inspired by you know on movies like Zombielands and things like that. And it's just it was it's really something we we've, we're really happy with. It it came out really well. Um, it's one of the most talked about features of the game is just the way that we tell our story. 
And so uh, it, it it's just a really cool thing. Um, yeah, we're... So here we're just finishing off some more zombies here, and I'll move on. This is the first level, so there's not there's not too much stuff going on. It's more just to get people acclimated to how to move things around, how to make the surrounds. A lot of times in this game, there, people will play it, and they have like an aha moment where suddenly, after playing it for a little bit, they finally figure it out, and then the game becomes really easy with those mechanics. And so we kind of try to ease people in... Um, you know, with with a, a simple first level, we have no actual pop-ups, which is something that we're very happy with. Um, all our all all our tutorial and all our story is in world. There's no pausing of the game and covering things up and clicking through dialogue or anything like that. So here, this is the we start to give the player some more more toys to play with. So if I make this surround with these cops, I have a chance to get sniper rifle bullets. So another one of the other cool things about the game is we have seven different items. In the first level, you really don't have access to those items, but then from here on out, you'll be able to get these items. Each type of surround has a chance to get a different type of item. So if I make this surround with this soldier here, then I can get a grenade. And with the grenade, it's you know it's going to make a big explosion, so I can take out that whole group of zombies just like that. So the cops get sniper rifle bullets. The cop, uh, the soldiers give grenades. Here, the the punk rockers they're going to give, uh, they give Molotov cocktails. So these are unpredictable. Like they you throw them down and they can spread out and they do a lot of damage everywhere. But the, you know the sometimes they'll take out civilians as well as zombies. And then the scientists, they are going to give what we call LC suits, which are, you know, uh, they're, uh, they're the hazmat suits, basically. And so you pull them, you can, instead of, these are the only ability that don't affect zombies. So if I cover a zombie with it, it's not going to do anything. But if I put it on the ground with uh, survivors, it creates wild cards. So like this... I need one, I need uh, one more blue right over here to make this giant surround, so I can actually use the LC suit and it'll finish it off. And every time you, the the LC suits get used, uh, a scientist comes out, which is why it's the LC suit because it's a lady cocoon. So now we're at the point of the game where you just kind of get to play and like the different types of surrounds. You're going to get different types of items. So there's a Molotov. Uh, there's also uh, more advanced surrounds, like the traps, and you can also get cascades and combos. Uh, and those each have their own different type of reward. So if I can make this surround with these two sur zombies with one move, then I can get a, I'll get a combo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set that up. So now they each each of these groups, like I'm going to surround this with green and this with pink. And because this zombie has now one uh, s scientist here and this zombie has one soldier, when I swap them, it'll surround both groups. And then with the combo, you get a random item. So with the random item, I can it's you don't know what's going to come out of it, but it always kills a 2x2 two two square. So I drop it, and a piano fell down this time. We have uh, different objects. There's like four or five that fall out, and it's just kind of a fun little thing. We've got old school TVs, uh, safes, and some other stuff. So here's another thing. Uh, the, the environment interactions are not all just scripted like the two were in the first level with the containment logo and the, the cop car. And this one, you can choose when to use it. You don't know exactly where it's going to land, but if I click on this, it'll take out a huge chunk of the map. So the, it's more, there's a lot of uh, flavor and fun in the game. It's just like seeing what happens when you make certain things happen in the environment.
So in our cutscene things, we also have like ambient zombies. You'll see zombies eating corpses. You'll come by some just little scenes of the chaos going on. Um, you'll see our, our maps. We try to differentiate them in some fun ways. Just like cut some shapes out of them, just to give some different variety in how they how they end up working. This map, all you do is you just take this shot here. Because we're trying to cure the zombie plague. So now we've created a new type of zombie. So those are the basic mechanics of how containment works. Uh, we have a three acts. Uh, each act is five different uh, chapters. Uh, there's uh, over a hundred different little blocks that you you play through. We have uh, as well. We have three high score modes. Uh, they're uh, a set number of blocks that you play through and get a high score. So I'm going to go ahead and play through one more level um, to show off a couple more. Uh, uh, one, uh, I'll show off two different new zombie types, um, and then uh, I'll, I'll, that'll probably be it for this stream. We'll do some more streams in the future of both Containment and the new game that we're working on. Uh, so I'm going to play through in Act 2, um, Level 2. This one's really fun. So that, that reference right there that the movie, movie was really inspiring, That's we have a, a drive-in level, and you can actually watch scenes from an upcoming documentary called uh, America's Fighting Dinosaur. There's some scenes, there's one scene of that in our game, which is pretty fun. All right, so let me go ahead and play through this. And we'll just surround some zombies. So you see this, this, I clicked on that trash can. We have a lot of objects in the environment you can interact with, not just like the signs that kill things. But that uh, sometimes a zombie will pop out, sometimes a, uh, an item will pop out. It's just a, a little treasure chest that we added to have more ways to interact with the game. All right, so because I'm making that surround la or that kill last, he's I don't have to worry about that guy. These are some of the coolest things in the game. This this little fog we have all over the place. I really like that. So we have these zombies off in the uh, over here off the map too under this tree, and as I make moves, there's a chance that these guys will run over into the into the grid and infect from the side. So yeah, now that zombie's coming out and he's gonna infect. We show where. So if I don't make any moves over here, that arrow, he's gonna infect himself to death because he's gonna, based on the way it is. So now I get a trap, I get a lightning bolt out of it and get some. I get some benefit for being a little smarter about it. And then these, I'll click on these. Okay, there's an airstrike, those are great. Oh, and then that was nothing. So the airstrikes are great because they take out a whole row. So I'll go ahead and use it down here. So you'll see, you might notice that these zombies, some of these zombies are now purple. Uh, with the, when try, we tried to cure the infection earlier, we actually mutated it and created new types of zombies. So now we have this zombie. He's a super zombie. 
whenever you make moves, he he'll infect a lot faster than the regular zombie, so he's a little more you have to be a little faster with him. Also, when you surround him, you'll notice he actually turns into a regular zombie after the first surround. So now uh, you effectively have to surround him twice to get a kill on him. Go ahead and use a lightning bolt there. Ooh, I got a combo there. That's great. All right, now we're in the Renaissance Fair. This is one of the, the ideas we came up with pretty early uh, when we were trying to decide on what to do with the park. And it just seemed right that the zombie mutation would hit a Renaissance Fair. So we actually have quite a bit of different environments in the game. Uh, that was one of the key things we wanted to make sure we had a lot is not just uh, a bunch of zombies, which we have four main zombies, and then we uh, have two... Uh, boss zombies as well but we wanted a lot of environments so you go through the city you go through the park you'll end up in a church go through a graveyard uh, uh, you go you see a drive-in theater you you know every map has something a little different to it and that was definitely a key thing that we thought about with the game just to make sure that the player was engaged with the surroundings not just with the actual uh, the board itself Now, one of the questions we get asked a lot when, whenever uh, we're showing this off is, is the game very difficult? And the, the campaign is, is not super difficult. It is designed to be something that you, know, you can go through and have fun and, and just sort of experience the world. Um, also, I'm very good at this game. So when I play it, I tend to not make many bad moves and I tend to see what's going on and am and, and very quick at... Uh, ascertaining where I need to uh, spend my effort. But in our survival levels, uh, those get pretty difficult. Uh, the, the, they, they ramp up and the last couple blocks in each one is pretty easy to fail at still. Um, I will frequently find myself not being able to beat them. Oh, that guy infected just the right time. And that is one of our, our most popular parts of the game. It's probably the most quoted line from the game. That's right, zombie wizards. So obviously, when the zombie infection hits a Ren Fair, things, double things go bad. We have witches now, or warlocks, wizards, whatever we call it. Zombie wizards is on the screen, and I've talked about them many times, and I still got it wrong. Anyway, zombie wizards, they are like, wizard, uh, they are like all the other zombies, except that they summon this shield. So if I surround this guy here, he's got a green shield, then I'll kill him in one shot. But over here, let's say I decide to surround this one with purple instead of orange, they attack, he doesn't die immediately, and he immediately starts infecting. So there is a penalty, sort of, for surrounding with the wrong color of, uh, of survivors. And so when they surround, they, when they attack out, they use their little lightning rod and... So what we're going to do now is I'll go ahead and surround him again with the wrong color. Because you can kill them with the wrong color. It just takes more moves. So here we go. Again, another wrong color. 
Again, he starts infecting, but I'll go ahead and get him one last time. And there, it just takes three incorrect color surrounds or one correct survivor type to get him. So now we have three different zombie types, which we use in a bunch of places. And all our levels are basically hand built, like they're, we choose where most zombies spawn so that we kind of create these interesting scenarios and try to, to have some sort of design with the game. And then there's also some randomness to the, the block design as well. So here we'll go ahead and get some surrounds done. And uh, we'll just go ahead and clean up this level. So containment is available right now. It's available on uh, iPad. It's available on Steam for Mac and PC. And it's available on Android tablets. Uh, we are looking into taking it to other, other, to porting it to other platforms as well, but we can't really speak to that right now. As it, some platforms it works better than others. This right here is one of my favorite environment kills. It was an idea we had a long time ago that we wanted to have. Like in those old time uh, like black and white uh, silent films where there'll be a guy and he pulls a house down and he, the house falls over and he slips just through the window. And we, we thought it would be fun to have that in this game. So we didn't quite get there, but we have this instead. You click on these and the castle falls apart and just kills everyone in the middle. And so then you're left with a, a much smaller block, which actually sometimes makes, this, makes it hard if you don't get all these surrounds real quick. But I shouldn't have any problem here. And I'll get one more surround off on the wizard. And there we go. So that's one of my favorite levels in the game, and uh, today we've been playing on the, the Steam version. This is actually the Mac build um, we're using, so you, that's pretty much what containment is in a nutshell. Uh, we'll do some new vi videos upcoming of show off some other stuff, maybe some how we made containment, and definitely we'll be showing off our new game as well. So uh, thanks for taking a... Um, also, uh, some of our friends that were at, we were at, this game was selected in the PAX 10, and, uh, some of our friends that were in the PAX 10 booth with us as well recently released their game called The Swapper. Uh, it's available now on Steam, and it's pretty awesome and just amazingly beautiful. So you should definitely check that out as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll be talking to you soon. Uh, thanks for watching.